Hi, this is James Gunner, the Cine Tech Geek, and today I've got a special presentation as DCI recently created a video explaining new peak and minimum luminance values for theatrical presentation. This is an extremely important uh, development because it lays the roadmap for the next level of cinema experience. Um, and so I'm doing a quick video quick presentation here with slides quite boring slides but it's an important topic and I want to just go through it and try and hit the, the, the main points quickly so you know what's coming and uh, should you be worried about it or not well you'll find out from watching this presentation so let's get going this is a big deal yes like I said um, next generation in theatrical presentation is coming um, there have been interim solutions but now we've got something that's going to um, bring that higher level of uh, presentational experience to the rest of the industry as a standard or as a, a, a commodity you know device you can buy a hdr television or sd uh, standard definite sd television uh, standard dynamic range television or a hdr television in the future you'll be able to buy standard you know typical um, current um, peak and minimum luminance projectors and in the future you'll be able to buy enhanced ones in accordance to what's been recommended today. Who is DCI? Uh, DCI is basically the major cinema um, producers or the major studios, in, uh, mostly based in Hollywood, who really make the films which make most of the money in the world. So it's important, you know, the amount of money that's spent making sure they play out on all the cinemas in the world. Um, there's a lot of collaboration and agreement on you know how and how that's going to work and DCI is a is a collection of people in those organizations the technical people who um, walk forward or, or direct how that's going to happen so for example the DCP that you watch in cinemas every day and digital projection um, most of that and how that developed was through the direction of the DCI committee um, and those directions were taken on by the vendors in the community and SIMPTI and we have developed today the digital cinema solutions that we watch uh, when we go to the cinema. So who is the Cinema Tech Geek? Well I'm not DCI, I'm not reading from a script where every word is checked by a committee, I'm a cinema geek with a good understanding of cinema production and presentation technologies. This is just my opinion, hopefully to help you inform you with what this all really means. What did DCI say? I highly recommend you watch the videos, but in brief, they go through the methodology they use to reach these new minimum and peak brightness levels. Here we have the summary slide from the DCI presentation, and I really want to bring your attention to the following sentence. Achieve a sufficiently differential HDR experience based on the minimum and peak brightnesses here. In other words, going over 300 nits had no discernible difference and going under 0 0.005 nits had no discernible difference. So that's why these numbers were decided and that's what the industry wants to go forward with because it's the best quality you can achieve without having to go to too much effort. Now we have these luminous levels, let's put them in perspective. Up the top here, we have the current digital cinema standard, 48 nits and 0 0.024 nits. So what does this mean? Like today in the cinema, when the screen is black, you can still make out the square on the wall for where the image is supposed to be. It's, it's more like a, a, a very, very light gray or a dark gray. Now, the new standards are going to be 300 compared to 48 and 005 compared to 0 0.024 so it's a lot brighter significantly brighter and significantly darker with that sort of level of nits it's going to be much harder to make out where the image is supposed to be on the wall the only issue that we can see based on these numbers is that the construction of the cinema and the materials used in the cinema are going to become more important and that's going to be some a topic of uh, future uh, discussions, so bouncing light off the wall, the exit sign, this can have a big difference or a big effect on the actual contrast level that's achievable on the screen. 
So those are some of the things we need to look at into in, in the future. But in terms of looking at this new level compared to other premium solutions which are available from uh, vendors today, let's have a look at the Dolby Vision and the IMAX levels. So 110 compared to 48 compared to 300. And the minimum brightness, well, that's it's hard to say. They use this, like a low local dimming sort of technology. It's not exactly that, but I like to it's it's it, I like to refer to it as that because that's how it appeared to me when I noticed it on the screen. And um, let's just talk about the emissive displays quickly. They can achieve. They're not very common yet, but they theor theoretically can achieve these levels today. Um, I'm not too sure about the minimum ignition brightness issue. So although you can turn on turn off LEDs completely, when you turn them on at the minimum value, there's still a bit of a jump. Uh, but there's other mitigating issues that you probably overcome that with. I'm not totally up to date on where they are, they are with that. They've probably um, fixed that issue by now. What does this mean for ex cinema exhibition? First, the biggest question that everyone's probably asking themselves is will there be another digital transition or VPF? Obviously no. The VPF was a once-off thing transitioning us from a film to digital. Um, installing these new premium grade presentation or projectors with these new luminous levels, that's a choice. You can still go with the current technology or you can jump to a premium level like you could can today if you went with an IMAX or a Dolby Vision solution. But in the future, making that uh, jump into that type of uh, projection solution will not be about going to a uh, particular custom solution. It'll be standard like a H dynamic range television. HDR TV is standard when you go into to the, the local electronic store. And that's what we're really talking about here. The roadmap to that in theatrical exhibition has now been set upon us by DCI making these decisions or making these recommendations. Um, as a, as, a, as a producer, how do I make content for this technology? Um, obviously, you can already make content specifically for the already existing premium solutions like Dolby and IMAX. And to do that, you have to go through their custom mastering solutions where you go through their own special um, mastering uh, projection editing solution and, that, and they remaster content specifically for that um, type of presentations, licensing involved, etc. But now that um, um, uh, that DCI has made these recommendations, the vendors will come out with solutions which every post house will be able to install. So that's the main difference which will be happening. Now, will you have to replace your cinema equipment? Well, obviously, definitely you will in the future because it has a, a specific lifespan and that lifespan for a lot of people is still quite a few years away. Um, but when you do need to replace it, you do not have to uh, specifically jump to these new, new premium levels. But it is a, is a choice like you have a choice of installing a Dolby solution or an IMAX solution. You have a choice now of jumping to these new um, grade of uh, projection technologies. So, um, yes. When will these projection technologies become available? Many years from now. So it really depends. We have to go through a process. Uh, the vendors have to make the products that they know that they can sell at the that a, at a, a level which is compatible with the exhibition and the post industry. The post industry then has to, to buy it and, and get familiar with it and uh, get to the fact where they can master towards those standards. And then the, the industry has to then ad adopt these projectors and uh, make sure everything works correctly. So we're talking many, many years. This is not a, not a quick process. So uh, this isn't something you, you have to, you should be worried about in, in the immediate future. Um, but definitely keep uh, an eye on by talking to your vendors of how fast these technologies are coming on, on stream and if it's something that you want to go down to in the future with the way you make or show your movies. Uh, let's talk about what this means for content producers. Uh, obviously, um, um, until now, we had no idea how what the minimum, uh, the peak and minimum brightnesses were. But now we do. The, the studios can now develop mastering pipelines specifically to answer those requirements. Um, they don't have to go to a specific, do it for every specific projector type, like for IMAX and digital, blah 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 blah. We now have a, a, a common target for everyone in all the industries like for HDR and television we'll have that for theatrical and the whole industry can work together um, and amortize the cost of this new targets 
through the whole industry and that's a that's a big deal and it's one of the why one of the reasons why dci are making this announcement is is a, is a big deal to me anyway um this is a big deal because you know before dci made this uh these numbers known um there was lots of projector uh, new technologies emissive and projection systems and these were i call them god type devices where they were would try to achieve the best of the best of the best at prices which are godlike as well and realistically that's not something the industry can adopt because we can't afford to put million dollar projectors in every theater so we really need for uh, uh, to know how long that piece of string needs to be so we can manufacture those pieces of string competitively and at a commodity priced wise so every cinema can potentially um, afford to put in a projector of these new uh, peak lumens levels minimum and peak levels um so how long will this take my opinion is it'll probably take one to two years for the production side to get this their uh, their end together and then it'll take a couple of years for exhibition to start adopting or projectors to come out with uh, the competitive price levels needed for us to to really adopt these technologies um well, vendors obviously now that they know these levels what these levels are they can now start um, uh, optimizing the production of projectors at a cost-effective level to achieve these luminous levels and still be cost, uh, something that a cinema can afford and a post house can afford um, so that's what they'll be doing over the next year or so and the conclusion the development of these new peak and minimum luminance levels really brings cinema up to par with what's happening in the domestic market. There's been a lot of advances in the quality of home entertainment systems and cinema needs to be seen to be matching it if not exceeding it. And these new um, peak and minimum levels do that. Cinema to me is, is a far more uh, connected experience for the consumer. The, the director has a much more control over what's going on on the screen. The director's intent is there. There is no lights to the side or windows to the side interfering or um, coming between the director and the user or and the consumer watching the experience. And we need to ensure that that is, uh, you know, that that, that experience is uh, brought up and is you know relevant to the current consumers considering so many things are changing in their day-to-day -day life and how they consume content so this is an important part and why i think that this is something we really need to do in cinema um, i know the picture quality is still really good and fantastic but it's not just about having the best picture partly perception is there as well and there is room to improve so it's time that we did start to look at doing that as a common everyday picture for all cinemas and how we make content for theatrical experiences anyway that's james gardner the cinetech geek bye for now